So I thought I'd do an update on the long term bug out bag slash inch bag. So for now, it's the American Large Alice Pack. I'm thinking about changing it to something a little bit more modern because I want something with a little more organisation. All of the military, well, all of the bags that I've got are pretty much military surplus and they're all bucket style packs. So I want something with more pockets just so I can organise things a little better. So I think I'll have to go with something a bit more modern. So I'm thinking about replacing it with the 511 Rush 72. They're both about the same capacities. I can't remember what the capacity is. I think it's like 3,500 cubic inches or something like that. In both of the Alice and the 511 72, I think. I just going off my head. I think it's three and a half thousand. But anyway, for now it is the Alice Lodge, and it weighs about forty pounds as is. It's a bit heavier than the last time I showed it. I've got a few more things in there, but uh, it's not one of these sissy bug out bags that are designed for twenty four to seventy eight hours. This is designed for long term, year, two years, maybe it's longer. I could probably get the weight down, like I say, but I can't find anything modern that feels like it's going to last. So most of it's pretty much military surplus stuff. It's built to last, it's hard wearing, and it's easy to repair. So uh, I'll get straight into it on the bottom. Usually we'll be attached to the bottom, but just for the video, make it a bit easier. Gone with the uh, Thimarest Ridge Rest Classic. Really like this, I've cut two inches off each side. Makes it a bit more compact. It's four inches four inches shorter now overall. And it just fits the bag better. I think before it was sticking out like that. So, well, not that extreme, but like that. But uh, I really like it. It's cut down to about the same width as the German Bundeswehr folding. Sipping my uh, pad that I usually use. So I've got the uh, carry more tracking poles. These are awesome. No sissy carbon fiber or anything, it's just solid aluminium. I've put shelters up with this in high winds and they haven't failed. They're pretty nice, good quality poles. And obviously they'll go with the shelter that's in here. On this side, I've gone with the standard EDC uh, first aid kit. Stick it on there. Now I've got another EDC first kit. It's a bit smaller. I'm doing less work now because of the virus. So I don't really feel like I can justify carrying that big kit with all of the shears and everything in it. Up here, I've got the Kamenga H3 compass, which is attached to the bag with the Grimlock Carabiner, I think it's by Maxpedition. It's attached mainly by the Alice clip as well, but I've had a problem with these coming out and actually lost this compass when I went on camping and I found it the next day on a path. So now, extra security, I just put the Grimlock on there. So if it does fall, it's still attached and it's not going anywhere. And I've got a ranger beads on that as well, or pierce beads, whatever you want to call them. And just some gloves. And then down here is the canteen slash cook kit, which is the awesome Soviet era VDV canteen slash cook kit, which is awesome, three piece. Very thick, 
heavy duty aluminium. It's one of my favourites. I think it was designed for the Paris Troopers. It's also been adopted by the Navy, I think. Or it was, it's now surplus. But I think the... Uh, like the cadets, I don't know what they're called in Russia, they're like uh, reserves or cadets. They still use these for the training, but they're awesome. And on the top. Should have done this before I did the video. I think I might replace these with the uh, buggles. Quick. Release ones. So here is the British Army Arctic sleeping bag. I think I had that in the last video as well. I really like it, it's pretty Heavy, but reliable. And then this pocket. Got a Robins logger wood stove. Had this for years. I usually use this with bushcraft as well. Just take out the bag, throw it in the bushcraft bag. And get going. Hasn't let us down. Can't remember how long I've had it, but uh, I trust it. And then, yeah, we've got a little bit of a hunting kit. Got some uh, fat wood, a uh, spare compass, some soap, a uh, forked stick, and that's to go with the slingshot. I can put the stick down under this bit of bicycle in a tube and you can line up arrows and turn it into a sling bow very easily and then on this side I just got some snare wire for rabbits and squirrels and some spare uh, medium exercise bands that I use for slingshot bands and two spare leather pouches and I'll keep you going for a long time. And this one. Still want to do an overnighter in this. It's the Lomo Buffy bag. Which is four walls, a roof, little viewing windows, vents. You just throw it over yourself. It's like a little house. I want to do an overnight with that soon, I hope. I said that last time but it just never happened. But I've got more time since I'm not working as much. And then in here, I got the Soviet cup. And the emergency food ration by Seven Oceans. Just got a cut in it right there, so it's no longer sealed. So I have to buy another one of these, so I'll break into this one and eat it. I don't know how long it's been like that, but it's sealed individually on the inside. Shouldn't be a problem. And that's all that's in there. Again, on the top. Oh, still got these three pockets here. I got a Optizan Eagle monocular, just five by fifteen. I like it. Had that for a few years. I won't have anything in here that I haven't used before. I don't see any point in putting stuff in that you haven't tested out. It's kind of stupid. I see it all the time with the. Uh, Bug out bag videos, all of the gear is completely immaculate, they've never used it. 
See him on uh, Instagram as well. It's the same with everything on Instagram. EDC is with Unmarked Gear. Bushcraft is with Unmarked Gear. Bug Out Bags. Spotless. Anyway. Got a utensil set. Got some homemade little spoon, spatula, titanium chopsticks. And the hand forged iron cutlery that I got from a uh, Grim Frost. Oop. Use this all the time as well, they're awesome. And they just look kind of cool. And that's all, it's in those little pouches. Oh, no. Got the Phoenix TK 20. Then in the top, got some rope. And that's spare clothes. And I've got a belt. There's an extreme cold weather. Face mask in there, wool gloves, wool socks, wool jumper. Wool is king, so everything in there is pretty much wool. Winter gear, all good. And I've got a little pouch in there as well with the battery for the TK12 and a little charging cable. I got a little schmog or schmag or shemag, however you meant to say it. Got the handle for a Spetsner shovel, cold steel. And then over here, I have the head for the Spetsner shovel. And then in here, we got some. Bank line, I think it's number 36, Pathfinder brand. And this is just my basic standard fire kit for when I'm in the woods. Char tin, char cloth, got a flint and a obsidian, I think that is. No, it's not, it's quartz. I don't think you can get obsidian in the UK. Just some extra. Denim for making more chalk cloth and a striker, that's my favourite way of starting fires. Got some little bits of fat wood cut down, ready to go. Some 550 cord. It's already set up as a ridge line. And then a big ass Ferrisarium rod. Some lifeboat matches. And then in here, this is also from Grimfrost. This is just a huge Striker, very thick, it's about seven or eight millimeter thick. And that will last a lifetime. I see it's my favorite way of starting a fire, so I carry two of those. Flint I can find on any beaches in my area easily. So those are a source of fire that'll last a very long time. Long after the matches have run out, the light as the ferrocerium rods have run out. And those strikers will last a lifetime. So that's just permanent fire as far as I'm concerned. Metal tins I can find anywhere. Of course I've got that tin, so that's just continuous fire right there. Got air hooks. I always use circle hooks. They're the best I've found. I've been fishing since I was 10 years old. I'm 33. 
and circle suit hooks are in my opinion the best in my experience always easy to unhook the fish and unlike j-hooks you don't have to worry about striking so you can set these out on long lines leave them overnight come back and the fish will still be there unless some big predatory fishes came along and got them but i've never lost the fish on circle hooks and i got the suzuki harmonica the pro master 350 this is just for entertainment purposes so you can play it on the street as well and busker for money or food if things get real desperate got the victorinox swiss tool real heavy duty And in here, more circle, well, not so circle hooks, which is different types. These are the best ones, the ones that I highly recommend, and they weigh ten pound. And I got them a bit cheaper, but these are the best. Get them from uh, UK Hooks if you live in the UK. The VMC Sports. And these are the best I've ever used or come across. Recommended in size 6 up to size 1. Stick them in your bug out bag. Oop. And the other ones I really like are the mustard hoodlums. Size 4 up to size 1 knot. You can live bait with these or just use worm baits. But these are real strong 4x strength. These won't bend out. And they're more of a semicircle hook as well, so you don't really have to worry about striking with these. They do good good hooks sometimes, but if you're fishing for food, it's not really gonna matter. I'm more into conservation fishing at the minute. But uh, anyway, got the Falcon Ivan DC4 and just a piece of leather with some strapping compound on it. And the German uh, sewing kit, got some skizzers, ton of hooks, seal needles and everything. Ow, just stabbed myself. Sort that out later. Ton of buttons, safety pins. Got wool thread, which is nice. I've actually got a hole in my wool jumper I'm wearing now, so I'll have to repair that later. And then just a load of thread. That's a pretty good complete kit. And lastly in that pouch, just got a little match case with a few feet of waxed canvas thread, also for repairs, and here that's got a few more needles and some more lifeboat matches. And that's all that's in that pouch. And then, best saw I've used, Silky Gomboy 210. And my main tool is the Japanese Nutter hatchet, which is awesome, used as an axe, knife, machete, just a good general purpose tool. 
last a very long time and if it does break it's going to break on the wooden handle I've got some other things in here that'll help us remove that, time to file the pins out and just replace the handle with some wooden pins and then back straight into work so it's a very good versatile highly recommended piece of kit that is easy to repair should it break and then in here is the shelter we've got two Polish shelter halves to obviously make the lavu. You're never truly homeless when you've got a lavu. And then, right here, we've got a Swiss wool blanket. Not 100% sure if it's one of the knockoffs. It's got a seal on it. It was sold as genuine on the site that I got it from. It is really thick, which is a good sign. It's not thin or cheaply made. And it does have the Swiss cross on it somewhere. Right there. So I'm not sure if it's real or not, but it's thick, it's high quality. And then, in here, I got elephant skin, which is the German military ground sheet, surplus now. And what fell out was a file, nice little double sided one, standard. Metal file. And another file, which is a diamond file. Made by Twin Die. And then two sharpening stones, one thousand. 3000 grit small ones from Naiwaki and then it's got a map and that's it oh, I've got more A diamond plate, which is one thousand and four hundred grit. And I believe that's it for the bag. So I forgot to mention with the fire kit, I've still got the pocket bellows and a small ferro rod, that's a large ferro rod, it's full size Swedish Army ferro rod I just cut the little plastic handle off and that's the Bushcraft fire kit that I've been using for over a year now set up as is and I really like that, it's perfect for me so I wouldn't be surprised if I've been rambling on for 40 odd minutes. I've still got the bike to go over. I've got the German, East German combat packs that I'm using as saddlebags or panniers, whatever you want to call them. So I'll get into that in a different video. I think I've been rambling on for too long in this video. So we'll leave it just on the bag. So thanks for watching. Nasfredania. Auf Wiedersehen. Dewa matne. Bye bye.